Welcome to the Irrigation Station. My name is Tom Garbett. I'm Lance Cannell. Today I've got some high quality commercial grade control valves from the NIAD website. Tom, could you give me a quick run through of the major components that we're going to be using in today's video? There's two components that we're going to be using for today's videos on these control valves. The first is the bleed screw, which we use to manually open the valves. The second is the solenoid, which connects the valve to the controller and can also be used to manually open the valves. So Tom, what are some of the more common problems that you face during spring? The most common problem that we generally face in spring is a client will go to turn on their own irrigation system, they'll get the water turned on, and before they can even get the timer on, they've got a zone running and they can't get it to turn off. Oh, so I see we've got some of these commercial grade control valves that we sell here. Um, would you mind telling me some of the more important components for this video? Absolutely. So the most important thing to know from this video before we get into it is how to turn on assist, uh, one of these valves manually. So the two things that we've got here are we've got a solenoid and we've got a bleed screw. Now the solenoid you can turn counterclockwise to open the valve manually. Same thing with the bleed screw. The only difference between the two is the solenoid has wires on it. Now if your wires are tight, you might want to go with the bleed screw. If you don't have a bleed screw, don't worry about it. Okay, so my valve won't turn off. What does the solenoid and the bleed screw have to do with that, Tom? That's a great question. So what we've found over the years is that air behaves differently than water. Now, when we're winterizing a system, we're using air. And what we found is that while a valve may close with air, it won't necessarily stay closed when we introduce water in the spring. So what we suggest is go open up your bleed screw and your solenoid and then just go ahead and make sure that they're closed tight. That sounds pretty simple, Tom. So what do I do if this doesn't work? If this doesn't work, there's a good chance that there's an issue with the internal components in your valve. At this point, it's probably best if you give us a call or go online and book on our website. I'm Lance Cannell. And I'm Tom Garbett. Thank you on behalf of NIAD for watching. 